but in, in a way, we all are real. Uh, uh, she's from University of Economics in Bratislava, uh, Slovak Republic, and she's a head of UNICER in Slovakia. Nice to meet you and welcome to our panel discussion. Uh, then I would like to introduce Yolanta Belgus from uh, University of Downs. It's a University of Technology, and she's a coordinator of ACERT um, uh, certificate or certification in Poland. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh -huh. And then um, uh, another uh, panelist, Nicole Walder. Nicole, can you unmute you? Sure. Thank you. Uh, Nicole is from University of Göttingen and she's a member of UNICERT committee. And then uh, our panel is from Spain, Julia. Uh, she is from uh, Technic University in Valencia in Spain. And uh, she's a member of uh, ACTES uh, certification in Spain, which is a local uh, certification organization in Spain. And finally, uh, our uh, French panelist, uh, Laurent, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure if I can pronounce your surname, so Laurent from um, University uh, Côte d'Azur in Nice, and he's a vice director of uh, CLASS, which is a French higher education language certification. So welcome to the panel discussion and the floor is yours. Thank you. So hello everybody. Um, uh, there is one person you can see ne sitting next to Julia, whom we should mention, and that is uh, Cristina Perez. Cristina, for a second, <laughs> your attention. Uh, who is actually the head of uh, Certacles, and um, um, who has been in, in our group involved in our group, so she'll be physically uh, with us. Uh, while uh, Julia will uh, talk about uh, her experience. Um, uh, one second. I'm starting my the PowerPoint. And nothing is happening. Yes, there it is. Oops. One second. Um, So I hope you can see the, uh, the slides. I now have the problem that I can't see the pictures. One second. Oh. So now it works. Now I can see everything. So we today we we want to um, meet with you and discuss how we uh, approach the challenges we see at in universities as far as testing and certification is concerned, and how we try to adapt to the new generations of learners and, and the question of the policy makers. Uh, and we would like to share our experience with you and see uh, how all of us together, we can be even more uh, stronger. So this within the context of, of CERCLES where everybody is involved in, in testing and assessment and certifications. And uh, this aspect is, is, is very important for our uh, uh, students. And, um, and, and therefore, we want to, to help them uh, to move uh, forward and get the necessary tools they need uh, for their future career. Um, yeah. So, this is again the list of people you, uh, Blanca, uh, uh, in already introduced uh, introduced us uh, to the audience. So I will skip this one and move on to the next one. And I would like to invite um, uh, my colleagues to briefly 
present what makes actually their certification system uh, very special in their context within this uh, within our network our network the network of university language testers in europe so we function um, we want to work across borders more closely together in order to to be stronger as a as a group uh, compared to to uh, being on our own in our national context so i would like to hand over to uh, Yolanta saying something about uh, ACERT uh, and what makes ACERT so special compared to the others. Um, okay, so Polish certification system ACERT comprises both uh, proficiency and achievement tests, but mostly achievement tests ranging from general to specialist language tests. Um, Correlated, they are correlated with the language course syllabus, um, respecting very strongly respecting the university uh, autonomy. We offer them for a variety of languages and at different levels. That's in brief, in short. Languages and at different levels. That's in brief, in short. Languages and at different levels. Um, I, I think if There's some if, kind of echo, yes. Yes. So if if those who don't speak, uh, I can't mute you here. Uh, okay. So if you could uh, mute when you are not speaking, that would be. Yeah. Nice. Now um, the next uh, certification system on the list is is the CLES. So uh, over to you, Laurent. Uh, yes. So can can you hear me? Yes. All right. So the class uh, is, is a very specific uh, certification system and our place in, in Nulti is very clear. We are the best, quite simply. So uh, <laughs> just just to make sure my friends are listening. Uh, so we are task based and we are scenerized. That is the, uh, the, the class certification system uh, draws from real life scenarios and uh, all students are tested from the B1 level to the C1 level uh, using uh, contexts that really draw from, from real life. And uh, interaction is really at the core of the, of the test because uh, it's, it's the task that we uh, use as the, the, the final one. And uh, for B2, for example, students have to interact uh, with each other, defending a different point of view. Uh, and then they have to get to some sort of compromise which is exactly what happens in real life uh, when you have to negotiate something uh, professionally. So that's how we design it, and and uh, that's uh, the the way we we propose it. So it's uh, we have in France something like twenty thousand students uh, taking it every year nationally. Uh, well, except for last year, of course, but you know why. Uh, and uh, but that's that's the general figure. So NALTI is for us extremely important because uh, that gives a, a European um, dimension to the test. And uh, we can also uh, uh, see what other colleagues have done solving problems that we have. And since we entered the network, uh, I can really tell you that the, uh, the class has really improved especially with the uh, marking schemes, grids, thanks to the Spanish friends. And uh, we, we really are moving on. So it's, it's just so great to be part of this network because uh, it really makes us uh, uh, interesting, more interesting and more proficient in terms of quality assurance. Thank you, Laurent. That was a very long one sentence. Uh, I move on to Sartacles, Julia. Hello, uh, I have to agree and disagree with Laurent. We are the best <laughs> in Spain. We actually examined today in the midst of this COVID crisis. So we're very proud. <laughs> we are also uh, very happy to be part of NALTI and uh, CERTACLES is a national uh, language accreditation system. It's a framework that works for 62 universities it's also uh, very respectful of uh, university autonomy. 
uh, because we have a single framework, but each university can uh, develop their own tests according to their needs and also organize uh, exam seatings according to the needs of each university. We also do A2 to, well, A1 sometimes to uh, C1. And uh, we've been, we are recognized by the Ministry of Education in Spain and the Conference of Rectors. Our, our main goal were performance based, I wouldn't say we're task based, we're performance based. And our main uh, goal is to prepare our, our students to, to, for their incorporation into the labor market. Long sentence, I know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so over to Unisat, Nicole. So UNICERT is not only a certification system, holders of the UNICERT certificate had hours of qualified training in language programs that are really designed for their special education needs in language for specific academic purposes and a language for academic purposes. And we are based in Germany as we are part of the EU German Association of for language centers at universities, but not only based in Germany. Okay, um, then Unisat Lutze, so Helena, who is in Brno. Yes, the franchise of Unisat, which means that we follow the, the, the format, but because the conditions are different, so we do not accredit institutions, but language programs and examinations. And uh, this uh, accredited universities in the Slovak and Czech Republic because LUSA stands for Language Accreditation Unit for Central Europe. Uh, we have five universities, but there are 10 language centers accredited, and they are entitled then to examine students and to issue certificates. And the programs that are accredited currently are at, when translated to common European framework at uh, B2 and C1 levels. So I might invite in particular that our Czech colleagues, if they have any questions about Unisat Lutze to, to speak to Helena over the next few days. And, uh, that might be of interest in your context as well. Um, and then uh, um, uh, the, there are two more associations or two more systems that are on our list. The first, first one is Unilang in the UK. Our colleagues couldn't uh, be with us uh, today. Uh, so they have uh, their system as well that is uh, still, I think, a bit un, in the de under development. Which, and that is particularly the case for the Portuguese association, Reckless, and their system um, is um, uh, is called CLAP uh, that is still under development. So um, to summarize, well, there was an issue on which system is the best. I think the best of them is the mixture. So it's actually NALTI that is the best uh, because uh, this cooperation has actually uh, uh, led to an influence from one system to another. And I think this has actually has had a, a strong impact on the quality uh, of our of our work and of our tests, uh, and this is actually the topic we would like to share with you over the next uh, uh, few minutes. No. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. I'm fighting a little bit with the with the technology, um, uh, but uh, we'll get there. Uh, so. The context, as we said, is we are part of this network and this is an, an offspring of uh, CERCLES. It all started with the CERCLES uh, focus group on language testing and assessment. Some of you might have been with us yesterday for the, the CERCLES focus group meeting. And um, we, it started with uh, the cooperation of existing uh, uh, testing and certification uh, systems that existed at, at national level. Um, I am, there were both uh, the UNICERT system that started in the 90s uh, 
uh, um, uh, developed by the German Association. That was the French system um, uh, that was started by the French ministry. Um, and then some of the other systems looked at our approach and then or some of the associations and then developed their own uh, um, system. Um, one aspect we haven't mentioned so far is the recognition of our certificates at European level. This has always been on the table and we have now reached a step where we are actually more uh, visible at European level uh, and we have uh, put our, we have developed our logo and put it on on the certificates and in uh, when it comes to um, uh, entering university we make sure that the other certificates are equally recognized as um, as our certificates when it comes for example to being accepted at a master's program um, this is um, the history of our network. I will not go into it in detail. Um, we just had a presentation on reading skills. Uh, so I trust in that. Um, two points to, uh, two moments to point out. You already saw them on a previous uh, slide are uh, the signing of the memorandum of cooperation of our partners at the Cyclos Conference in Poznan in 2018. And last year, in the context of a focus group, uh, of a meeting of our network and uh, of the Cyclos Coordinating Committee meeting, um, we uh, agreed on an addendum that actually focuses strongly on uh, the mu mutual recognition of our certificates. Now, um, one of the key uh, points of our work are the minimum standards. Uh, that we looked into. Um, so, um, I would like to hand over to Helena in Brno uh, to talk about the two first aspects on our list. Um, we need the mic to be turned on in Brno. Thank you. So when it comes to uh, test purpose and or purposes and specifications, uh, generally speaking, I don't want to repeat and reinvent the wheel, but uh, actually what tests are, they are steps in language acquisition for Test takers as well as institutions where all involved parties they learn where they are in particular lingual situations. It means that test purpose should really be based on very careful and thorough analysis of the needs, characterization of situations, and what they are supposed to identify is the position of test taker on the continuum from functionality to dysfunctionality in those situations with various levels, of course. So based uh, going back to the situations that are taken into account, Lauren has already mentioned that, that there are real situations. So what are the situations where students need to deal with the language and to apply their skills and competences. So it can be within the studies, whatever it means, so processing information from other sources, um, attending lectures, today with um, internalization of universities, they can come across um, lectures who provide lectures in other languages. Of course, mobility programs are a large part of that, so that they have to be functional cooperating with their colleagues, either virtually or in prison. Um, and then there's one part that is really strongly linked to academia. Then we have the other situations, which means 
practical placements of students where a company or any institution where they work for a while uh, has company language that, that might be different from uh, mother tongue or fresh graduates who look for the employment. So this is the whole scale of situations, just generally speaking. And the test purpose is to identify the functionality, ability to function within those situations, and test specifications goes back, uh, go back to the purpose. Uh, therefore, needs analysis is the crucial and essential element. Uh, that's my personal comment. Uh, I'm not very happy when we talk about student needs analysis because what it means in some contexts and it's misinterpreted is that we are trying to analyze and identify the ways how to make students happy, which is not really the case. So needs analysis are linked to the functionality, to the level of functionality students are supposed to prove when facing the situations. When it comes to design, of course, task-based approach is, I don't want to say easy, but easy to identify at this uh, phrase or the level, because we can imagine the real situations and we can just translate it into the conditions and the needs or design of the test. How to deal with individual items and individual, individual aspects is more complicated and more difficult. And uh, what we are doing, and I will maybe talk about it later on, is that uh, it can be, this can be based on the overall task, so that just one task, um, identifying the skills of the test taker in individual skills, uh, so that going through the process, they prove that if they are able to solve the task. Uh, or, on the other hand, we can have quite atomized tasks. For instance, I, I will give an example from chemistry. Uh, in science, um, some of the tests are focused on just on identifying or being able to understand the numbers because imagine that you are involved in the exper experiment so that all those mm, amounts of individual components in the experiment are very uh, important. If you have a text so that it's easy to identify but if you talk to your colleague cooperating on an exper experiment you must make sure that you understand well. So colleagues teaching uh, within those uh, courses they claim this is one of really the problems that students may face. So it seems as a kind of atomized uh, task within the test, but really listening to the description, for instance, of experiment and then processing the components of the solution that is the outcome and identifying individual uh, amounts of individual components is one of the tasks. It seems from the, the overall and phrase all the perspective as something what is trivial and really atomized, but because it's so important, it can be put, but it must be put in the wider, wider picture. So Okay, yeah. So this, uh, we have to look a bit at time. So. What I wanted to say that um, this purpose phrase, the overall objective must be identified, then specifications come out of that, then tests are designed, and then we will deal with individual items. But everything must be really corresponding and must be coherent. So, thank you very much. May I ask the others then to be as brief as, as possible? Um, Julia. 
Yes, uh, related to what Elena was saying uh, about everything being well uh, correlated and and everything being focused on on, on needs, uh, one of the one of the main concerns that that we had not only in Spain but I think it was in all or our uh, national certification was how how to control quality, how to make sure we know we're doing things right, but how how to control that this is actually happening in every university. So uh, our minimum standards also include a series of um, points on quality control. In the case of Spain, for example, we have internal uh, audits at each university, but we also have an internal audit nationally, that is the National Association uh, audits the exams uh, that each university presents, but we also have external audits, that is, uh, we hire uh, a company that audits our exams externally and gives us uh, their opinion and gives us, they follow a list and tells us, tells us whether we're following uh, uh, the procedures we're supposed to follow or not. And one of the goals of NALTI, uh, which we talked about from the beginning, was to create a group of experts from each uh, national association to work on quality control for everybody. That is, instead of, uh, or on top of hiring an external uh, company, we could also have external experts from other organizations, other national organizations that can give us their input, that can give us their, uh, can provide us with their expertise. So that, that was one of the main goals of Nalti from the very beginning. Um, and related to that is the topic of test analysis. Uh, test analysis, when we read test analysis, we also think about the, the we, we always think about the, the quantitative. In our case, we were very strong. I think all universities in general, all language certification systems in general, uh, were very strong uh, qualitatively. We are very good, I think, all of us qualitatively, but we also felt that we needed maybe to approach a quantitative angle as well, because that has been criticized by external uh, examining boards external when I mean when I say external I mean from outside of the university context and it seems that even though we're very good qualitative if qualitatively if we don't have a quantitative aspect it seems as if we're lacking we we don't think so but uh, we are working on on quantitative and qualitative analysis of all of our tests and again the idea is to work all of us together and to give input to, to, to all national systems so that we do not only focus on our national uh, needs or our national uh, uh, background or, or environment, but we're also getting input from uh, other systems. Uh, and these quality control and this analysis extend not only to the to the exams, uh, the, of course, the, the, the items, the, the the ratings and the scores, but also to the test administration, because uh, we believe that test administration is crucial to ensure the reliability of the results and to avoid mal malpractice. And this has become uh, particularly relevant now with the crisis we, we, are, we are going through, because malpractice is something we are all worried about and, and lack of reliability is something we're all worried about. And we believe that by working together and by uh, having a very well established and control, controlled in the good sense, not in the sense of not respecting a university autonomy or national autonomy, but in the sense of uh, organized or well structured. And we believe uh, test administration needs also uh, needs to be organized and structured in order to, to achieve this reliability that we all want and, and need. So really thinking about reliability and validity of our tests and how they have an impact of the teaching that we have tasks focusing on all the communicative needs of our groups for students, for the career, for hiring purposes, and therefore also the teaching preparing for the test. 
has to think about these things, has to think how to deal with the generation Z, with their idea of information gathering. So our tests also resemble real life tasks, more or less what we need, and how students gather information, analyze information, and perceive the information, not just understanding one specific test, asking comprehensive information about this text, but to show how they would cope in a real life situation. And that's why we base the test both on needs analysis and a strong quality control, also in a quantitative way. And also our certificates are valid for the universities. We control them. We show our uh, test taker that they are more valid than just general English because nobody just from Steed could take the test. They're specific designed for their academic environment, for their educational environments. Laurent? Yes, so very quickly, I would say that uh, uh, the CLES uh, has an international scientific committee made of very respectable experts, uh, among which you find uh, uh, Dr. Julia Sabala and Dr. Johan Fischer, uh, and uh, we do uh, try to uh, uh, take from our colleagues uh, their advice uh, and, also, and also their, their, their guideline, guidelines so we can uh, move on, and this has proved extremely efficient uh, in the last few years. Uh, we, we are working on this notion of validity, um, and uh, it clearly is uh, something which is uh, uh, extremely important to us, but extremely difficult because our uh, class system is extremely qualitative, uh, and scoring is clearly an issue uh, in terms of validity but we're working on it and we're trying to uh, uh, adapt both uh, problematics, you could say, of scored tests on the one hand and qualitative subjective ones on the other. Uh, so it's very hard to be, uh, uh, let's say, scenarized, task-based, uh, actional, action-based, and uh, to be fully valid. Uh, as Julia said earlier on, the, the class system is fully recognized by the minister, the, the Ministry of, uh, of Defense, I was going to say, the Ministry of Higher Education, and, but we are really trying hard to defend ourselves right now. So, um, and, and uh, we are just the object of a national decree, uh, and uh, which uh, uh, legitimizes the class, uh, which uh, is... Uh, um, proposed in something like uh, 57 universities and uh, as the universities are providing the test uh, it, sometimes it is clearly inter integrated into the curricula and uh, part also of semester exams uh, and, and integrated so it's quite a, a, a different perspective we can be external but we can also be clearly into the curricula which means that the students who leave universities have, of course, a mark in languages, nine languages in the class, but also a certificate, which is now uh, almost recognized uh, at the European level. Thank you. Um, when, uh, when I went through this uh, list of minimum standards this morning, uh, I uh, remembered uh, a message from Nicole and Helena saying that something was missing on it. And maybe one thing we should add to this list is actually that content plays a role in all our exams. Uh, it is not uh, talking for the sake of talking and writing for the sake of writing, but there is always a purpose, a link to it. And I think this is true for, for all our exams as well. Um, let us move on to the Next slide, um, the quality assurance uh, scheme. So Yolanta. Microphone, Yolanta. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I had to switch it off. Uh, so um, transparency obviously is uh, one of the uh, key issues in, in quality assurance and um, in order to, to make this recognition of our exams possible at all, 
um, all the parties involved in, in, in NALTI um, agreed to share information concerning the university language certification system. Such information is enclosed in detail in the appendix yesterday, the memorandum of cooperation. Uh, so that's one way, giving detailed information about our certification systems. Another way of uh, assuring uh, transparency is uh, peer review. Um, for example, in Poland, each test has to be verified by the asset verification board before its administration at all. And you can believe me, it's very strict. Um, this solution guarantees, guarantees also kind of constructive criticism. It's very helpful for the test designers. Um, at the international level, as already um, Laurent mentioned, um, some institutions um, like um, also Poznan, Valencia, now um, these run comparative studies of the exams, so that helps with transparency as well. And um, transparency of our regulations, procedures, guarantees that the uh, declared uh, level, several level of the exam is, is achieved and we can talk about um, recognition of, of our exam. So that's all I said. Thank you. Um... Over to Laurent, a short uh, info on our continuous review to, of the system. Um, well, that will be very short because uh, um, basically the, the, <laughs> the rubrics here are, are really wide and, and uh, it, getting into each of them or one of them is going to be really problematic in, in two words. So. Uh, um, uh, honestly, I just don't know what to say concerning the, 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 these rubrics on the class. Uh, the the thing that we but have, but it's not only the rubrics. No, well, but uh, we review the whole system. At, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Regular. So one thing that we do concerning uh, the, the the general quality assurance scheme is that all the papers that we um, that we provide in universities are nationally examined by a, a board. Uh, which is called the, the uh, validation committee. And there is not one paper that is given that is proposed to students and that has not been validated nationally. And this has been going on for years and years. And it clearly is uh, the best way we found in order to harmonize the different papers and also guarantee that the level that is tested is um, uh, coherent uh, nationally because that's the problem with uh, really uh, qualitative testing, uh, that in fact it's very easy to um, be more demanding in one paper than another. And, and that's really the, the kind of things we're trying to avoid at all costs. And uh, Julia would like to introduce us to plans for the benchmarking process. I'm going to be very brief here because I'm going to talk about it a bit uh, further on, but one of the main worries uh, nationally, as Long was saying, and, and also at European level, was to make sure we were all testing the same levels. Uh, we do all have uh, uh, very, uh, in general, very strong systems or very solid systems to ensure that, but our idea was to do that as well at at, uh, at European level, and we're going to talk about that a bit further on in, in, in the next slide. So I'll be very brief here. Thank you. Um, uh, Helena uh, will briefly say something about our accredit uh, accreditation procedures. Unmute. Just as an example. Uh, what we actually do is, as I mentioned, we are the, the franchise of UNICERT, but under our conditions, we can't really accredit institutions because there are other official bodies accrediting universities. So we accredit programs and exams, which means that um, applicants, language centers that are interested in the accredited programs, um, they submit material, which is very similar to something what goes through 
accreditation processes in the Czech and Slovak republics. Uh, so there must be the level of um, the language program identified within UNICEF. Those levels are corresponding with uh, European framework. Uh, number of contact lessons, which is really an important because we can't claim that we can achieve whatever level in very short time. Uh, objectives. When I was talking about um, needs analysis, this is actually the outcome. Originally, and it happens here and there, that um, uh, applicants, they just somehow copy something from European framework, then it comes back and it shows that they didn't do their homework, that it was not, not really linked to their program. Uh, then uh, syllabus plus methodologies, literature used, we insist on the variety of the sources to be used, not just one textbook. Uh, and then the list of the teachers who must be consult members, which it means that we organize workshops and we have bi-yearly conference where one section is devoted to testing and UNICERD is really the core element over there. And then examinations, so not only the conditions which must be corresponding with the conditions for testing at that particular institution applying, but also the structure of the test uh, and also the, the members of um, the examination board. Mostly, not always, because the difference is um, based on the different needs of institutions, but mostly we have as, board, uh, as an examination board uh, members, somebody coming from the field. It means that somebody speaking the language and making sure that actually the, the requirements and tests are really fitting and following the, the genres and the, the culture of that particular field. So okay. it's just brief description. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Julia, was that the slide where you wanted to uh, develop mm -hmm. on a bit further, very briefly? Very, I'll be very brief, this one and a further one after this one. Uh, very briefly about the challenges that we have as a network, as uh, the NATI network, as we said before, uh, on the quanti uh, one of the challenges from the point of view of the quantitative aspect is that we do need cooperation. We cannot perform statistical analysis if we do not have the data from other universities. So working together allows us to uh, to do more analysis, to do more research, and and to ideally uh, get more partners. Uh, we're strong. We're quite strong right now. I believe I'm. I'm very optimistic. So I, I think we're quite strong. But we need more partners. We need uh, more universities, more systems to join us to increase our visibility. And uh, from the quantitative uh, point of view, this would mean this would mean uh, an enormous amount of that data that could be analysed and that could answer to this uh, constant criticism that uh, uh, universities city systems don't have a quantitative aspect, which is not true. Uh, but we can actually prove this with data, which is in the end what we need. And I was brief. Thank you. Uh, I would like to move on to the next slide then. Um, and we have another five minutes because I want to save the last 10 minutes uh, for uh, 10, 15 minutes for a discussion with the audience. Uh, so if we could uh, briefly comment on this. Uh, so Helena, if you would like to start. Actually, the, the unique aspect of uh, the NALTI scheme is that it's integrated in academia. So we are talking not about whatever courses, we are not talking about whatever examinations we are talking at uh, um, different levels, but about uh, language programs and tests that are the part of either curricula or they are um, designed for the students in academia. So this is the specificity. So it doesn't mean that even if uh, we are going lower, like 
B1, B2 levels, and it's more general language. It's always linked to the situations in which students can occur. Okay, Yolanda? Um, if uh, if I was uh, actually when I was wondering yesterday about what you meant by this common core, it's actually either including all the aspects that already have been mentioned here, or, or there's just one thing that comes to my mind, which is um, the the fact that all the tests referred to are based on a common European framework of reference. Yes, at the moment, so they. Um, and this common um, European uh, framework of reference guarantees, yes, that as I mentioned before, that the exams are comparable. Um, but um, there are also some aspects mentioned in the companion volume to, to, to itself, for which our um, exams are definitely um, also um in, in using or, or employing this is the importance of uh, emphasizing the importance of like productive skills which were already mentioned by Laurent again and also the interaction um the elements of mediation for instance uh, um in writing tasks uh, demanding paraphrasing yes or, or oral tasks demanding solving some problems uh, run in pairs or, or in, in groups. So um, th this is a, this is that comes to my mind when I think about common core that the, that we uh, rely on common European framework of reference in, in languages. Thank you, Laurent. Our very strength. very. Yes, very briefly, um, something which is very important to all of us in, in the network, and I don't think we, we've really uh, mentioned that dimension. Uh, what is it to, to have uh, real life settings meaningful for target groups uh, and to have test, tests that are based on the needs of students and, and test takers? So one thing that we really want to focus on in the NLT network is definitely the fact that uh, production uh, has to be uh, targeted in our tests, and but not in a dissociate way. Uh, as Yolanta just said, mediation is really part of the process. And we start with uh, some input, maybe little input, a lot of input, but then uh, students, candidates have to mediatize some sort of context, uh, which is very often turned into arguments in the case of interactions. And production is the one thing that we don't want to leave aside in an LT group. And this, of course, refers to uh, certain tests that you can find on the market and uh, which we believe are not exactly reliable uh, in terms of what they guarantee uh, when they uh, certify students. So you start from understanding elements, um, comprehension processes are there, and then you uh, just express yourself uh, with your needs, uh, with the uh, missions that you have to accomplish. And this is how we define, in fact, uh, meaningful real life settings. Uh, Nicole, would you like to finish on this one? Uh, Laura almost said everything. It's really a well basing on the student's need on a needs analysis and not only what the students would like to see but also what we know what they are really have to do in their future careers in their future student lives so we try to resemble real life settings and try to show really what is behind the cfi in our context it's not just writing a postcard to the parents it's taking the language and doing something with them in their career, in their lives, and doing it in a reliable way. And when we see it, oh, each certification system did it for their own academic environment, yes. but on a common course. So we wanted to have it valid for all testing systems and all the language centers in Europe. 
Um, and as uh, James Barbara would add to that, it, it, the, the tasks need to be meaningful to the learners, to the test takers. Right, uh, so to summarize our USP, um, uh, I think we can say it's the unity in diversity in our language testing and certification systems that is our strong point. Um, here are, is a list of our potentials and opportunities. I would like to skip that and would actually move on to our questions and comments uh, in, in, for the audience. Yes, uh, Julia. Uh, I would, I will also only like to mention, uh, because you skipped the part on standard setting opportunities, and uh, you've all been talking, uh, we've all been talking about the Common European Framework, about mediation, and one of the uh, uh, main opportunities that NALTI would offer, or offers national systems, is the possibility of doing uh, standard setting processes at European level following uh, the CFR in validating our exams at European le level. And this is a very big opportunity that the network offers uh, the systems that, that are within the network. And I think this is something that we should mention because I think it's a, a, a very, very uh, good opportunity for, for all of us. That's Thank you for this. Uh, and uh, now we'll open the floor to the audience. So, uh, how is it in your context? Have you got certificates apart from the credit points on the grades in the, um, uh, uh, in the transcript of records? Um, how do you tackle test development quality control um, the issue of international recognition of, of, uh, of the certificates that we issue. What is the role of cooperation in your context with partners outside the university or uh, outside your university? And how can we become stronger and cooperate more? I think we've got a bit more than 10 minutes. Okay, so can I invite the audience to ask questions, both here present in Brno and those participating online? The questions might be uh, asked via chat. I will share them with the audience and with the panelists. My question, I think you're muted. No, we are not. We are not. So maybe on behalf of CJB, um, I believe we do not uh, issue certificates, uh, at least not on a national level here, am I right? Okay, so maybe uh, what I would like to know is who I can get in touch with to get some feedback, maybe on some of the new things that we are developing in the center for our own purposes, maybe for some small units, uh, where we are based, because we are quite fragmented, we are not so centralized. Uh, on the other hand, it gives us a lot of freedom. Um, so, um, are there any concrete people I can uh, address, or because you know, institutions and organizations uh, are a little bit like too big for me to to um, address uh, as one individual who needs some feedback or one designer or creator of assessment rubrics. Uh, do you think you can give me some more concrete names or addresses? Or how can I get in touch with some specialists who can tell me a little bit more about how to make my design more reliable? Uh, this is actually a bit the, the idea that is behind the Circles Focus Group that we actually work together more closely. It always depends a bit on your context because uh, as we realized within the NALTI network, uh, there is no uh, perfect recipe for any, or when we look at what we discussed yesterday in the focus group meeting, um, some of the solutions work in certain contexts, but they don't work in all contexts. And uh, uh, so, um, uh, well, if it, when it comes to specific well, number one, I would suggest in, in, in your 
uh, national association that you might set up a, a, a group to work on assessment in your context because that is normally similar but different but still there is more homogeneity than uh, at European level. Uh, the second uh, point is actually when you um, when you have uh, uh, when you want to get more involved I think the circles focus group is, is a platform for that mm -hmm. and uh, and if there are uh, questions, I think we could also, if you send them to us, to mm -hmm. one of us, mm -hmm. um, we might also look who could actually help uh, uh, so that we actually see what the question is about, who is the specialist in our team, and then forward it there. Um, the, the activities we do have started discussions in other networks, like in Italy or in, in, in Portugal, as you've seen. Um, and uh, and uh, so they uh, then uh, um, start a discussion with us. If there is somebody responsible for, for example, if you say this is a great thing, we would like to do something in our context, um, and we would get together in our country uh, or, or start at our institution, then get in touch with us. And uh, we've had participants attending our meetings. Uh, uh, to see how what how we work i mean that's how it started with uh Tertacles. um they went to our presentation a unicef presentation at a conference uh they looked into what we did we gave up a, a presentation on unicef there and they said well this doesn't really fit uh, into our um in our structure we have slightly different needs we'll develop something that is uh has a similar approach, but different. And, and that's how um, it, it starts in different contexts. All right, thank you. Thank you for the offer. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Other questions, any other questions? Okay, may I have a question for uh, Julia? Um, uh, Julia, you mentioned uh, that you need to increase the visibility of your certificates through gathering more data. Uh, which data uh, do you have in mind in particular? Can you elaborate on this more? Yes, uh, when, um, when I talked about uh, giving our certificates more visibility, I didn't mean our certificates as uh, third tackless certificates, which of, of course are included in, in this. I meant uh, uh, gaining visibility as, as NALTI network. I mean, gaining visibility, our, all our certificates gaining visibility together. And when I talk about data, I mean, the only way of validating our exams and of ensuring, ensuring that our exams are reliable is carrying out research. And for this research, uh, we need to examine the, the uh, we need to examine the, the test, the, the items. Uh, but we also need to look at the scores. We also need to look at the results. We also need to look at the marking uh, schemes and at the, at the numbers. We need to see which scores we're giving to which candidates and we need to perform statistical analysis on those scores. So when I talk about data, I mean uh, examples of writing, examples of uh, uh, speaking, recorded, uh, recorded speaking from different candidates, uh, written uh, compositions from different candidates, uh, scores and markings from different examiners at uh, each national certification system so that we can compare all that and establish whether we're doing the same thing or not. And these, uh, I'm, uh, my colleagues already know I'm very optimistic because I do think this is not that difficult. I think uh, uh, once uh, we, what was difficult was to get to the point we, we are at now. That was really difficult. Right now, we're already working together. So uh, once we are already working together, it is not that difficult to obtain all this data and to uh, validate our systems, both uh, qualitatively and quantitatively. So that's the data I meant. I meant uh, different exams, different um, uh, items, uh, items from the exams, uh, performances from students, uh, marking schemes and scores given by examiners. I think that more or less answer the, answers the question. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. It's clear now. 
Okay. Any other questions from the audience? I will check the chat to see if there's something. <laughs> uh, not yet. Okay, uh, my colleague. Can I have a question for Lauren? Uh, uh, you promote uh, task based assessment a lot. Uh, so, uh, could you maybe comment on this situation now with the distant assessment? Would it be possible to somehow combine uh, task based assessment, or is it actually possible to, uh, to assess distantly task based? Uh, so to make uh, uh, to test and assess the students through or via uh, teams or, or, or some other uh, tools and still be it task based and authentic <laughs> and the best. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was for Laurent, but of course it's possible. It's even more authentic when you're cooperating on a distance and you have to force groups and you have to collaborate and you have to share tasks. It's even more authentic to the students. They really love these breakout rooms because they are involved in a social way too. We're not talking about content only, we're talking about the social brain, we're talking about the neuralistic things in language teaching and it's sometimes even easier in this case with task-based testing yeah, and, and teaching. If, and if I may add a, an example um, and, uh, and have a line of advertisement here, uh, I'll present tomorrow uh, with a colleague from, from Vilnius uh, on the transformation of moving from a, a rather traditional teaching and, and assessment approach to task-based teaching and assessment. And... Uh, uh, the teachers, we had a follow-up meeting in June, and the teachers said the COVID-19 crisis actually helped them uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to implement the task-based approach because suddenly project work was the activity they could do in classroom, and, and it actually speeded up the whole process, and they were suddenly very happy with it. But uh, Julia wanted to say something. Uh, Laurent, I think, was first. He was going to, to answer. Yeah, uh, maybe just um, uh, drawing from what uh, Nicole just said. Um, why are we testing students and what are we testing? Uh, and these are the key questions that, that should never be uh, thought away. And uh, OK, we want to assess a level and uh, we want to certify that and guarantee that. But what does it mean technically? And uh, one thing that I think is a key issue is to bear in mind that our students are not just students and professionally they won't be just professionals. They are social agents uh, and they're part of this world. And uh, it's very important to have, in my mind, a test that is uh, coherent with this vision that in fact we are citizens of the world, we are social agents, and our aim is to perhaps um, work on the reality and, and make it better and have some sort of social progress in it. So speakers are not just speakers, they are social actors, and, and this is the, the key thing that I think must be reflected uh, in tests. And this is, of course, extremely coherent with uh, task-based tests, but not only task-based, but also action-based tests. What is action? Uh, and this is the, the, really the spirit of the CFR and the, the companion volume, that we are working uh, in order to make something, in order to create some sort of European uh, community context. And this is really a key issue in the Nazi network. Thank you, Laurent. Uh, I must say this, uh, this is the time to uh, finish because, well, uh, in fact, we are slightly over on our uh, time so then, well, people are knocking on the doors, ready to uh, listen another presentation on learning-oriented uh, language assessment, which might uh, nicely complement your part. Thank you very much for your 
okay. uh, participation in the panel discussion. I was very happy and glad to uh, meet you uh, online and hope we'll see each other really somewhere sometimes in the near future. Thank you very much. And Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Welcome. Bye.